Hey guys, welcome to the Apple Store. We have the Teen Wolf, Tyler Posey, here with us today. Hey. Oh my God! Hi everybody! Holy shit! Ah. Hey! Oh. Wow! My God! <laughs> this is so cool. This is really cool. My God. This is I didn't I didn't expect all this, so it's it's for you. And I gotta say, you you're looking more uh, wolf than teen today. Yeah, yeah. I grew out I grew out my beard, and um, we're on hiatus now, so I hate shaving, and I always have to shave. Yeah. For for Teen Wolf, and um, I don't like shaving. Who does? But I, but I also don't know if I like the beard. Should I keep it? But okay, I guess it's unanimous. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in like the Roman Colosseum. It's like, does the beard live? Oh, yes no! or no? I think I think it lives. It's gonna live for now. What's your What's your plan in the summer? Like when you're when you're not filming the show? Like what are you What are you doing? Um, I uh, I, I I have a lot of projects that I I, I have. Um, I got this podcast that I just started. I, I'm real big into music. I'm trying to s set my music career off. Um, I write. I ri ride my motorcycle. Uh, hang out with Buddy. I travel. I do. I do everything. I, I try to do it all. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I can go on forever about what I do. I skateboard, uh, surf. Uh, I do everything. Hang out with my puppies. Aww. See you every now and then. I know. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I don't know if you guys saw Tyler made his your national music television debut right. on uh, the Today Show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My God. You guys are so funny. Yeah. I uh, I wasn't expecting that. I got a phone call yesterday. Um, from the producers of the Today Show, and she mentioned me play, performing guitar on live, and I, uh, I was like, absolutely yes, but I was like extremely nervous, and um, and it was great, it was really fun, and I hope I'm hope I'm, I'm hoping that was really big for my music career because I'm I got I got to be involved in music somehow. I want to be covered in tattoos and being on stage and just I really I really want to be in a in like a punk band. Yeah, a little maybe a little the new the new Blink 182. I would love that. <laughs> uh, speaking of tattoos, what's uh, I, one of the things that people really want to know, uh, at least on Twitter, is what's your what's your next tattoo? My next, I have no idea. I don't know. Um, I have a lot of them. Um, I've been thinking. Uh, so what I have, I got a lot of traditional. Do you guys do you guys know what traditional tattoos are? Like old fashioned and uh, American traditional, big bold lines. And so that's kind of, um, the more and more I get tattooed, I realize that that style is just badass and awesome. And so I, uh, I think I want to stick to that. So I was thinking about getting something like music related, but there's not a lot of things you can do with music and traditional tattoos. But there's this, you guys know what the old, that old fashioned like uh, record turntable thing with the big, with the big horn, the big speaker, what like is a, it called? Like a ph phonograph? Pho yeah, that is. Yes. Phonograph. Um, I they, they do really cool, interesting, they have an in interesting take on those kinds of tattoos for this um, style. And I might get one of those. You we'll heard see. it here first. He's, got, he's gotten a phonograph. Or something Japanese. I really like Japanese uh, uh, artwork and, and tattooing. So I don't know. I've, I have a bunch of ideas. I I'm, swore. I'm looking forward to your, your Japanese phonograph. Yeah. On your, <laughs> on your leg. Maybe I'll just convert the two. Yes. Has it like sunk in? Like you've been doing this for five years. Yeah. That's crazy. Did you ever imagine when you first started that that was gonna that that was gonna happen? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I knew I was gonna be acting forever. Yeah. But I, I I don't know. I didn't have any expectations with Teen Wolf. I knew I knew how good the show was when we first started filming, and when we um, when I read the script and, and I just know I just knew how good the show was. I didn't know I didn't know that you guys were gonna be so loyal and so awesome. Um, that's 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 a thing. Yeah. Give yourself a round of applause. Um, you guys, you guys are the most loyal, great fans I think anyone could ever ask for. Um, and I did, I didn't expect that. That was like the only thing I didn't really expect. You know, I knew people were gonna love the show, but we have such a community. You know, we have such a family, and I don't know how the hell we did that. I don't know. Uh, so thanks for being a part of it. Thank you. So um, yeah, I, I, I didn't have any expectations to how far the show was gonna go, but, um, but I'm very happy with where we are. Yeah. Do you ha can you like vividly remember like day one stepping on set and like what that was like? Day one. Yes, I remember. Day one. So instead of filming the entire first season as a whole, we filmed the first episode, which was called the pilot presentation. We didn't even film the whole episode. We just filmed half of it. And we were in Atlanta, Georgia for nine days filming the first uh, half of the episode. And um, the first scene, if you guys remember, was when... Dylan and I are walking up to the lacrosse field, and, and Orny puts me in goal. 
That was the first day, our first scene, and it was freezing. And, but we had, we had so much fun, and it, the vibe it hasn't changed at all. It's, uh, it was, it was, we had, we had, a, we had a blast. Um, it was just great. It was great to actually film and not know where the show was going to go. We didn't know if we were going to get picked up for a full season or not. And uh, I don't know. It was just, it was the vibe from, from season one, I, I, it can't be beat. I don't know. It was different. Uh, it was like going to college for me. I had never, I, I had never moved out on my own before and I lived with Tyler and Dylan and uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a really good time. Um, yeah, that first day, that first day was that lacrosse scene. Yeah. And it was, it was freezing. It was really, really cold. And I don't, I don't know what else we did that day. I can't remember. I just remember filming that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you didn't go to college, but like, sun goes down, bros get weird. That's pretty much college. You, you pretty much, you got, you got it all. That's what I'm saying. It was my first college, it was like a college experience, because bros got weird. Bros, bro, and they're still getting weird every, yeah, every week. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned Dylan. I know there might be some, some Dylan fans here. Sure there. Um, you know your uh, your friendship with him on the show is sort of one of my one of my favorite parts of it. Um, how did you guys kind of bond? Because you guys have like that that chemistry really comes through on screen. So do you remember like? Absolutely, yeah. The first time I met Dylan was uh, our our final audition for the show, and I and I walked in, and I I grew up skateboarding, um, and I grew up in a small town. I didn't grow up in Hollywood. I grew up in like the suburbs. So I wasn't, I, I, and, I, and I never really put myself in, I'm still pretty low keyed, I, I don't, I never put myself in the Hollywood scene. And so when I would go to all these auditions, there would be all these kids that would like dress up and like look really suave and I hated it. I just thought it was so stupid. And then I walk in there and I see this kid who's got a buzzed head and he's got a DVS shirt on. And I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm wearing a Hurley sweater and I've got this long ratty hair. And we looked at each other and we're like, what's up dude? <laughs> and, uh, and literally, ever since then, we, we started talking immediately. We have a thousand things in common with each other. We're the same exact age. We grew up not too far from each other. Um, it's, it, it's just, I can't, I can't describe our relationship. I really yeah. can't. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. We have, we've got, we, we've got a really deep love for each other. And just, we respect one another. And just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really interesting. I've never had anything like that before. You respect each other, as all bros should. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, I recently watched, uh, rewatched the pilot. You did guys, you really? I did. You guys were like Muppet babies. You guys were so young. Like, we were, so we little. Were. And I mean, obviously, you've grown, Scott's grown. How do you feel like you two have kind of grown together? Jeez, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, Scott's learned a lot about himself, and so have I. I I've, I've gone through a lot and learned so much. And I still have a lot to learn. And I think, I think that's where. Scott knows that too. Scott knows that he's, he's, he's grown a lot and come, come a long way from where he was, but he's still got a lot to learn. And uh, our, our, our growing patterns are very similar, you know? Because when, when, whenever Scott's going through something crazy, I go through something crazy. Like, when I, I, always, I always feel his um, intensity. Whenever I'm filming and, and like things start to go really bad for Scott, I just like, I feel bad all the time. I'm like, what is happening? I'm like, oh yeah, Scott is going through a hard time. <laughs> we're, like, we're, like, we're like E.T. Yeah. Does anybody know E.T. here? Where Elliot and ET can feel each other's pain, and it's kind of like that. I'm picturing I'm picturing you and Scott like touching fingers. It's like a very weird. It is, and it's, it, but it's not our fingers. It's something else. <laughs> Oddly, that was my next question, so I can just skip it. Um, <laughs> You know, so you remember when you first started, you have all these kind of newbies coming into the show. You know, we got Sprayberry, now we've got, you know, Cody Christian. Uh, do you feel like a responsibility to kind of like be the big brother and like take them under your wing? Um, not, not so much to be the big brother, but just to be the leader. I've always, I've always, even though I'm the, uh, even though I was the youngest when the, when the show first started, I was the youngest on the cast, I felt this need to be the leader. And, um, and, and I still, I still feel that way, you know? Uh, I learned from both Sprayberry and Cody Christian, so I, I don't view myself as a big brother to them because we both teach each other things. Um, but I, uh, I just want to be there. I want to be the leader. I want to. I want to be there for them. And um, yeah, I love those guys. I love them so much. I can't even. I can't even explain. I get to see Sprayberry soon too in Chicago. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a yeah Sprayberry or a yeah Chicago? Yes, yeah, Sprayberry, but uh, hell yeah Chicago. Nice. 
<laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, now you also, in addition to you know gaining all these new people, you know, with each new addition to the show, you have also lost some some family members on the show. Yes. Uh, you know, we we don't. I'm sorry, I got to bring it down for a second. Allison, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> this season, you know, no Derek this season. How does it feel when, when a cast member kind of leaves the show? Is it sort of an adjustment period for you? No, it really isn't because we see, we see each other all the time. You know, it's, it's, we, still, we still see each other and we're so busy on set that there's no time to miss anybody. No. You know, we're so, we're so busy that like uh, the show just keeps moving and moving and, and, and there's, it, it's just filled with so much content that it's, uh, I mean, we, we absolutely miss when they're around, you know? Um, I miss making out with Crystal all the time. Uh, I miss making out with Hecklin all the time. Uh, just You're joking. stealing all my questions. Just joking, just joking. Um, but, uh, I mean, absolutely, there, there's definitely an element that's, that, that we miss them, but we see them all the time. Yeah. All the time. I, I, these conventions, and we're, we're great friends, we live in the same town, so we always see each other. So it's not, it's not like they're gone forever, you know? Yeah. Uh, now, going into season five, you're gonna be busier than ever. First of all, producer. Yeah. Mr. Producer is how... I should be saying. Thank you, guys. How did that come about? What does that mean for you? Oh my God, it's it came about a couple years ago. From the I think the beginning of season three, I started realizing that uh, we don't have producers on set. Usually, um, movie and TV shows uh, have a bunch of producers on set. Like from, like say, say MTV. We have like usually there there should be like a bunch of people from MTV and a bunch of people from like MGM on our set. But we don't really have that, and uh, and sometimes we need a, a, somebody to bounce ideas off of, and, and somebody who's on the inside to like tell the director we need to get this shot, you know. And so we miss a lot of things. And so I, I was sitting there, and I'm like, I'm always on set, so why not make me a producer so I can have a say in what goes? And that's kind of how it started. So I mentioned it to Jeff Davis, the creator of the show, um, sometime in the third the third season, and he was like, start coming to all these meetings. And so I started going to all these meetings. I had a little notepad, I had my little that. glasses, and I was like. <laughs> um, and then I got really busy with the show, acting-wise, and I kind of put it in the back of my head. Um, and then when this season started coming around, I, I, I put it back out there. And um, I think MTV and Jeff and everybody else were a little wary of it. I get it, I'm 23 years old. I'm a goofball sometimes, but uh, uh, they trusted me enough to, to give me the position of, of co-producer. And um, I didn't know what that meant. So all I wanted to do was kind of hang in the background and learn. I just wanted to learn. I didn't, I didn't want anyone to be pissed off that, like, that I'm a producer now. I didn't want anyone to be like, oh, here comes producer Posey. He thinks he's all tough shit. But um, I'm swearing a lot. Is that okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, and so that's, that's how I approached it at first. I honestly didn't even know what, what to do. So I asked one of our other co-producers, I was like, what's my job? What do, I, how do I, what do I do? And he was like, just keep the piece on set. And I was like, I already do that. He's like, just keep doing it then. I was like, all right, sweet. And, um, and then later in the season, Jeff trusted me enough. Like he saw, he saw that like I was a good, um, I was a good, pro a good producer. And, and he trusted me enough to give, he's like, I'm giving you the authority to give notes. If you, if you, if need be, and it's it's really, it's so humbling. I I am so honored and thankful for MTV and Jeff and MGM and Teen Wolf to give me this opportunity because it's literally paving the rest of my career, my future, um, and I'm taking advantage of it. You know, it was my idea to hop in this position, but they didn't have to give it to me, and I'm just so thankful. And you know, I love acting, but I want to do other stuff for my entire life. You know, I want to direct, I want to act, I want to produce, I want to write music, and. I want to film, I want to write movies and host and build motorcycles. <laughs> um, and uh, I just, I'm so humbled by it and thankful. And it's, it's just, it's, they didn't have to. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping I make them proud, you know? Well, I think you made everybody here proud. Cool. Are you proud? <laughs> Very good. So you, you, could, you could totally fail, but you'd still have them. Okay, good. <laughs> um, do you feel like you're kind of like, a, because you have done the acting side and now the producing side, do you feel like you're kind of like a liaison between, like, like hey, producers, like, Sprayberry wants less shirtless scenes. Like, <laughs> Sprayberry wants less, then I would give him more. Then <laughs> you would give him more. Um, what do you, oh, oh, wait, what? what yeah, do, you do, do you feel like you can kind of speak on the cast's behalf with the producer? Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, and I think they trust me with that, too. Um, I think I understand the question. Can you ask it again? <laughs> you, no, you, you answered it. That's good. That's okay, good. okay. <laughs> yeah, the cast trusts me, and I'm like a good medium in for like producing and acting. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it's really cool, because like, I've got a different take on, 
um, producing because I'm an actor as well. So I see both sides of the world, and I think it's really helpful to have me as a producer. And I've saved some shots. Like there was one shot the first time I said something. The first time I was like, we got to do something differently about this. Um, I uh, there was a there was a shot, and like the camera was like panning like this and doing this really slow turn, and I was like, it's too slow, and it was kind of weird. And then I said, speed it up like 20 percent, and they did, and it was great. <laughs> and so thank you. Nice, nice. So that was like the first time I had said something, and uh, and yeah. Very cool. Well, in addition to producing, you are also going to be the new host of Wolf Watch. Yeah. They are they are working you to death, but I feel like this is it's something you you probably do you ask for this? Did they? No, 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 no. I would never step on on Jill's toes. I did not. I I, I would never ask to have her job. Yeah. Um. I I've. Uh, told MTV plenty of times that I want to host and any any opportunities you guys see uh, bring my way and uh, And they asked me they asked me to be the host of Wolf Watch and I immediately jumped on it. It's a dream come true um, And they wanted to collaborate with me. I have a, I had a huge creative part in in Wolf Watch. You guys are gonna love it It's way different uh, it's really different. It's it's really it's really the only thing I'm really confident in that I can do I'm really good at hosting <laughs> I'm really, really good at it, and it's the only thing I'm really confident at. I can, I'm allowed to be cocky too when it comes when it comes to hosting. It's the only thing I'll be cocky in. No, no cockiness. Do you want, do you want to like trade seats and you can host this? And no, can... <laughs> no, never. Yes. What do you mean, yes? <laughs> I, I would not know what the hell to ask you. Well, there you go. What can you tell us about the the drama of the premiere? Um. Well, there's a there's a big there's a big vibe this season to keep everybody together and Styles and Scott are both really trying to keep the friends and the pack together because it's senior year everyone's gonna go away to college and we're we're planning it and we're planning on going away to college where we want to move to and so it's this really relatable um, part of the show and then Kira's stuck in a traffic jam so we're like damn it we have to keep everybody together we can't we can't let Kira be stuck in a traffic jam and so I'm gonna go save her butt and. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a lot. There's and then and then all craziness happens, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it because I can't give anything away. But it's it's really really cool. It's really good. Woo! <laughs> I, I, I love that these characters have faced all these huge problems, like, you know, nuggets and A's, canamas, but it's also, like, traffic. Yeah. Ah, like, traffic! Like, ah, like they, are, they are not immune to these, like, very human <laughs> problems. Exactly. We want to keep it relatable. Even though it's a show about werewolves, it's still somewhat relatable. Werewolves and every other kind of creature yeah, exactly. you can imagine. And traffic. And, and traffic, which is the worst where, creature where of traffic. all. traffic. Yeah. Um, now, you, what, what can you tell us about, about Scott and Kira? I know, assuming he saves her from this evil traffic. Yes, yes. Uh, Scott and Kira, I love Scott and Kira so much. Um, I think they're really, really, really cute and um, super relatable because they're awkward, you know? Everybody's a little awkward. I'm awkward, especially when it comes to girls. I am sometimes. I am. Uh, I get nervous. I get nervous in front of girls still. Uh oh. And uh, and so and so, I think it's really sweet and, and and relatable and and great. I love their relationship, and they're always they never really know where they are in their relationship, and it's never defined. And uh, it just reminds me of high school. I was there a bunch of times, and um, but you know the thing that wolves and foxes do not mix well, so there may be some uh, some some separation between Kira and Scott. I, that is sad. I don't like that. That's maybe. Sad. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. And there may be more traffic. It's Beacon we'll Hills. Beacon Hills is never a happy place. Come on. That is, you know what? That is true. Beacon Hills uh, has had its fair share of, uh, of baddies. Do you have a, when, when watching the show, you yeah. know, something I love about the show is even if, like, I don't even know what's going on necessarily, I still <laughs> love it. I'm still, like, along for the ride. Have there been Does any anybody ever know what's going on in this show? <laughs> have there been any storylines where you've had to be like, hold on, like, this is, con like, you needed to take a step back and have it sort of like explain to you a little bit? Yeah, um, uh, towards the end of each season, I'm just like, wait a second, what the hell is happening? I'm sure you guys do the same exact thing. Um, because a lot of it doesn't make sense sometimes. No. It doesn't, sometimes. it doesn't. Sometimes, it, sometimes we skip over things, and I'm not to blame. I'm not to blame, I'm not a writer. And I'm a, I'm a producer now, so hopefully things will make sense more. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. There's there's plenty of times where I'm just like I'm. It was season three A when there was all this druid and Duroc stuff, and there were like 19 different evil guys. And it, towards the end, it got really, really, really confusing. But I became a true alpha, and 
It was awesome. The rest is history. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, for me it was like, why is Dylan O'Brien like puking himself up? And then that like, made perfect <laughs> sense to me. I thought that was the most. That thing made most sense out of anything on T-Mobile. That was like your. That was your, your moment of clarity. It was. It was like, oh god. Okay. That scene actually. Uh, Dylan's got a very sensitive gag reflex, and he. Uh, I we know are, from experience. We're, whoa. And, uh, and oh we're my not, god! Why did I say that? <laughs> And so he has to have this gauze in his mouth. And, and so, so the scene goes. Um, I wa Dylan's sitting on the couch like this with duct tape on his mouth. And, um, and I, have to go, I have to go crouch in front of him at one point and I'm looking at him. And then I look back and he's got this stuff in his mouth. He's got gauze in his mouth and tape over his mouth. And um, I, I, I go to look at him and during the scene he's, he's, he's like gagging. And I'm looking at him and he's literally just got drool. Like, cause you know when you're about to throw up, you just start salivating. He's just got drool and I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh God, he's gonna throw up. But I couldn't break. I had to stay in my character. And so like, um, I look back and all of a sudden he, he rips the tape off and like, you know, does his thing. And then he throws up on the ground. Like actual? He threw up, he threw up. Oh my, did you like, did you get like a video of that? Like on, I on your iPhone? I d well, no, the camera's got it. Oh. And that didn't make it to the DVD? I guess not. I don't know. It might be in there somewhere. Maybe he said, don't show that. <laughs> I think I, fans need to demand the release of the Dylan vomit. Oh, no. <laughs> no, what did I just Do start? It. Come up with a hashtag. We, we believe in you. <laughs> Please, no. Please, no. So uh, that, that was cool. That was fun. That, is, that sounds that fun. That was the first time I, I, uh, I had ever seen somebody throw up on set. Oh. There's a lot of first times. You time. never I, forget your first I, time. I fainted this season, too, doing a scene. It was, what? It was weird. It was so weird. I can't tell you how or why, because I can't tell you. I can't, I, but I'll, I'll, say, I'll say how weird it was. I, was. I was there, and all of a sudden, I started like blacking out, because so what happens on Teen Wolf are, we're always <laughs> like breathing really heavily. And so we always, I always get lightheaded, and I always almost black out. Whenever I'm doing a shot where I'm lightheaded, I literally almost always black out. And I can start see, you know, you guys are gonna get lightheaded, you, things start going black. It starts to fade, yeah. It starts to fade a little bit, and that always happens to me. And so it was happening, and it just never stopped. <laughs> and I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, I, my eyes never closed, but I, I went away, I disappeared for a second. <laughs> Jeez. And then and then I came back and like everyone was looking at me and I didn't know where I was. I didn't know uh, I didn't know if we were rolling or what. It was weird. But I was fine. It was fine. I kept kept filming for like 19 hours after that. <laughs> Did they like sit and check on you? They They're just like they he's standing. He's good. He's good. They checked after like two takes. I don't think anyone knew cuz my eyes were open. Yeah. It was weird, guys. It was I, I hope I'm hoping it's on the blooper reel. I'll make sure. It'll, it'll be on that elusive blooper reel with uh, Dylan With vomiting. Dylan Fugue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the secret blooper reel. Yes. Um, do you have any sort of favorite things that you got to do in your, in your five years, not counting fainting on set? <sighs> on the set of Teen Wolf? Yeah. Um, man, I... Jeez, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, no, I don't have anything. I, I don't, nothing, nothing, nothing sticks out. Um, I, I I don't know. I was I just I'm proud of the progress I've made. I I I started out as an actor that wasn't very good, and now I feel like I'm uh, I, I've I've progressed a lot, and so I think that's my favorite part about it. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's impossible to say. No, it's the good. perfect place to work. That's right, and you have grown, and I think everybody here uh, would agree with you. Ah, cool. Thanks, guys. Thank and uh, speaking of everybody here, it is actually time to turn it over to you guys for some audience questions. Right here. Um, can we, we can have we, can uh, we... some people from Apple who are going to have right here, right here, right here. Girl around. with the beanie, front row. Girl with beanie, front row. Hi. Um, I wanted to know what was your favorite part about your relationship with Allison on the show? Scott, Scott and Allison. Yeah, Scott and Allison. Um, I loved how much they loved each other. Uh, they both they both respected each other and and looked out for each other. You know, she saved his life many times. He saved her life a bunch. Um, you know, it was just it they they loved each other and. Um, yeah, I don't, I just, I loved, I love love. I love the love. Who would you like to see guest star on Teen Wolf? Jason Mewes. Do you guys know who Jason Mewes is? Oh, God. Um, Kevin Smith's best friend uh, from Jane Silent Bob and Zach and Miri make a porno or do a porno or something like that. And he's, in, he's in a bunch of stuff, but Jason Mewes is, is a, I, I love that man. And we've hung out a bunch of times and he's a big fan of Teen Wolf in the show. And I, I've, I've been trying to get him on for a while. Um, I would love to have Jason Mewes as a guest star. 
It would be so much fun for all of us. Hi, um, I was wondering if you ever want to do a collab with Halsey. Oh, yeah, I literally texted her yesterday and asked if she wanted to cover a song with me. Please do it, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Great, great question. I think that'd be awesome. Hi. Um, what do you see Scott doing after high school? After high school? It'd be cool if he was a, became a veterinarian. I think it'd be pretty cool if he, if he followed suit and, uh, and followed his, the, where he's heading right now. I think that would be, uh, I think that'd be great. And he, he really cares. He cares about people and animals. And he's really s sweet and gentle. And uh, I just think he would fit right in as a veterinarian. Hi. Um, if you could have one of the qualities from one of the characters on the show, um, what would you choose and why? Qualities. Could be anything. Yeah. Um, I, uh, jeez, I don't know. I don't, I feel like I'm all of the characters combined. I would like Lydia Smarts. She's very book smart. And I never finished school, so, uh, yeah, I would love to have some, some of Lydia's book smarts. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hi. Um, <laughs> did you watch the movie Teen Wolf before auditioning for the show? I did, I did. I'm a, I was, uh, I had seen it uh, long before I even knew about the show. Um, so I'm a big fan of Michael J. Fox. Uh, Back to the Future was one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I saw, I tried to see everything that he was in. So absolutely. Hi, uh, I just wanted to know, who did you have more fun making out with, Allison or Kira's character? <laughs> Allison and Scott definitely had some heavier moments. Um, here, here's something funny, I don't know if you guys know this, but like, there was one scene where we were, we were kissing so hard that uh, my nose bled, my nose started bleeding. And I didn't notice, I didn't notice. And so like when I pulled away from her, her face was covered in blood and I was like, what the hell? And then I felt my nose and it was bleeding. Um, I don't know, I don't know, they're both hot. They're both, they're both really good at kissing. Um, I don't know, I don't have an answer for that one. Scott and Allison definitely had some heavier stuff though. Who wants to see some heavier Scott and Kira scenes? Me too. You're the co-producer, make it happen. I am. <laughs> Hi, um, would you do another Music for Your Ears to Bleed To segment? Absolutely, yes, you yes. I've, uh, I've got some recorded on my phone right now. Um, I, uh, I don't know if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna release them. I don't know if I like them too much, but I also wanted to, I'm, I'm, a, I'm drumming now too a lot, so I wanted to cover like a song on the drums. Um, so I want to do uh, Music for Your Ears to Bleed To drum edition. Um, so yes, absolutely. I'm gonna try to do that. I've just been really busy and haven't really had time to sit down and and uh, and follow through with with making another one. But I uh, will try to do that for as long as I as long as I can. I love the idea of it. I think it's a really cool idea that I came up with, and it just kind of happened naturally too. So, thanks for asking. Hello. Hello. Um, I have a question. If Crystal Reed didn't decide to leave the show, uh -huh. where do you think Scott and Kira and Crystal would have been? in season five? I think when Allison died, Scott and Kira were dating. And um, I think that, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I think she was kind of, they were both accepting the fact that they, were, they weren't gonna be together anymore. Or, or maybe, maybe the fact that just Scott needed Kira and she needed Isaac at that moment. Um, and then later throughout life, they would have they found their way back to each other. Um, I don't know. That's, that's, that's kind of how I see it. I think that they both needed a break, date other people, and then at the end, come back to each other. That's how I see it would happen. But she is dead. If you could bring one person back from the dead, who would you bring back and why? I would bring Aiden back. Well, I, I would bring both of the twins back. I love them. I love them. I, I really, really miss those guys a lot. And. I see them. I see them often, but not as much as I'd like. And uh, I just I, those 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 guys are some stand-up dudes. Um, or Mr. Harris. Do you guys remember Mr. Harris? Yeah. I love Mr. Harris. I love Adam. He's poor, a great, great poor guy. Mr. Harris. Poor Mr. Harris. Hi. Um. I was wondering what's the funniest moment that has happened on set between you and Dylan. It's literally impossible to answer. I am sorry. <laughs> that is not we. I mean, if we had a microphone. I mean, we do. Uh, if we, if there was somebody recording us 24-7 on that show, it would be, it would be ridiculous. There is literally impossible to answer. There are not, there's not enough seconds in the world to answer that question. We are funny. 
together. We're, we're, we, we crack each other up. It's good. It's good times. Hi, Tyler. Hey. Um, my name is Tabitha. Tabitha. Yeah. Hi, Tabitha. Hi. My question is, who's your all-time favorite ship on Team Wolf? Uh, my all-time favorite ship? I like, I like Scott and Allison. I think they're sweet, you know? I, Good answer. I don't, really like, I don't really like pairing characters who aren't together together. I, I like following in the world of Teen Wolf, you know, and everything that we've created. Um, so I, I, like, uh, I like the direction that we've, 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 we've been going. And um, I really like Scott and Allison. They were really cute, and they kind of set it off for the entire series for Scott's career. Not career. I don't know what I, life. Scott's his life. life. Thank you. His, uh, yeah, his career is a wolf. Yeah. So uh, I love I love Scott and Allison. Thanks, Adam. Awesome. Well, guys, that is all the time that we have. Thank you guys so much for coming. I love everybody. Teen Wolf premieres. I love I love you guys so June much. June twenty nine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank uh, you, you can get you. all the seasons on iTunes now. So binge before.